Marsha Collier at Twitter. And I'm the author of the Ultimate Online Customer Service Guide and a few other books like eBay for Dummies and things like that. I've been working with customers for a whole lot of years. And one of the things that I found in my e-commerce background over the past 15 years is that customers need to be romanced. Big brands are learning this, and we've got some of the best examples. So if you want to tweet to me, I'm at Marsha, M-A-R-S-H-A-C-O-L-L-I-E-R. -L -L First, I'd like to meet Samson Carla. That really Carla Saavedra, and she is the brand manager for Samsung uh, Social Care, Samsung Mobile USA, and she helps 23 million people every day. Next to her is Bianca Buckerty. She's the manager for Chase. And as you can imagine, it's a little more difficult for her because there's a lot of money involved, not just technology. Nine billion. Nine billion. <laughs> right in, please. <laughs> and pulling up the end is uh, Felix Thomas, <laughs> Southwest uh -huh. Air. And there's very little we can say about Brooks. He's a turncoat from journalism, <laughs> who's found that social media is his home. He's the head of emerging media for Southwest Air. Obviously has some fans in the audience, which is good. Woo! 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 Woo!
ER are being used in the and the yeah. And to tag on to what Carla is saying too, so social customer service definitely belongs in your customer service operations, but you need to stop looking at it as just customer service. It's really part of your customer experience, and so the social service team, they're going to have dotted lines to marketing, to PR, to corporate communications, to marketing, to legal, to the, our lovely people in compliance. Um, your risk IT. So it's not just one team that sits in one silo in one building and you don't really know what's going on. They're reporting to lots of different people at any given moment throughout the day. Yeah, you're going to be cohesive about it. We uh, at Southwest, we have in the customer relations, marketing, and, and uh, communication all have a stake in it. We all sit together, we're all equal parts. Um, and so, you know, you got to have it's a left, left hand, right hand situation. You need to know what's going on in each of those departments because, respectively, your missions are very, very different, but they also need to unify and be similar. Uh, so, I, I think that it, definitely you need to have people who, who are very, very well aware of, of your policies, uh, professionals that know it on the back of their hands, but you know, that, that is true not just for uh, customer care, but also for, for everything around your company. You are the right, and you are the first. Well, staff. talking about you being you right. Mean, you mean it's right. right. That's my name. <laughs> <laughs> you being the brand. Um, isn't every employee who makes it public that they work for a certain company, they call your employees, right? In their Twitter bio, on their Facebook page, it says where they work. And that always, believe it or not, can reflect on your brand, no matter what they do. Um, how do you guys, I want to ask social media policy. Does everybody here who has a Twitter account, a Facebook screen, you have social media policy in place? That's good, the rest of you, really important. <laughs> Even if there's only three of you, really important. Carla, from your point of view. About yeah, this. I mean, it's, it's really one of the most important things, and really one of the first things that as a brand that you should do. Um, because realistically, you have thousands, potentially thousands of people um, who now have access to this public forum. And, you know, while they may only use social in their personal life, they're always representing the brand now. Um, so it's very, very important to have a clear cut policy on, you know, at Samsung, you're a Samsung employee and you're always representing Samsung, even if you're just tweeting on your personal account or on Facebook. And, you know, really have to represent the company well. And these are the consequences um, for, you know, if you violate the, that policy. And while it might be scary to have a policy like that, if you have very clear and concise guidelines on, yeah, this is your personal life, and you know we're gonna stay out of it. But please remember, in the back of your mind, you're always representing uh, of your brand, and these are the consequences. If you're very clear with your employees, um, and they have boundaries, they they will follow it. And to add to that, so your social media policy is really your starting ground, right? You think about when you first start to roll, when you have those little bar rails, those little bumper rails that go up. Um, I once rem I remember a CEO telling me, what's more important, my competitors knowing my plan or my employees not knowing my plan? So your people who are in the job every day, <coughs> and do you, what do you do to build a culture? Well, I'm actually a remote manager. Whoa. So I can tell you from first-hand experience, it is difficult. Um, but I think having that internal social media policy and having that open line of communication across all channels, like what Brooks does and what Bianca touched on, really empowers people, even when they're working remotely, to be your brand ambassador and just tell your brand. Well, they have to love are. your brand yes. first, I think. Yeah. And, 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 first. and I think openness and being communicative about these are the things that we're launching, these are the campaigns, this is our overall message, really empowers every single one of your employees to be your brand ambassador. And beyond that, the culture in a bank, how's that work? <laughs> I rule with an iron fist. Um, it's true. It's true. Right? <laughs> Sorry. Um, the remote thing. So right now, I just want to share a little bit about my team. It's the first cross-line of business customer service team at Chase Bank. So we have taken specialists that have the highest levels of empowerment from our retail side of the business, credit card, and home lending. And in order to create 
create the type of team that we wanted to do in parallel with our new objective, which is to create one chase, we had to put them together. So I want you to imagine <laughs> three or four specialists from each line of business coming together, being stuck in a training room with each other for two months while they learn about the brand and the guiding principles and how to write for an online environment and how to manage this and how to do that and now sitting together in a workspace, right? And what's really interesting is that they have, aside from the fact that they genuinely like interaction, sure that if your employee can believe the business is almost their own and carry that flag like it was their own business. And if I, if I can interject on that on the culture aspect, I, I truly think it's like empowerment is, is flexibility, education, and passion. I mean, it's probably a lot more than that, but it's a lot of trust, too. Yes, yes, and trust. It's trust is I mean, I feel like the trust is almost it's a second nature. Well, sometimes that's what you do. You know, you have a new employee, somebody you really don't know, and you're putting something in their hands. There's a lot of trust involved, as is customer service, as is if you're a consumer walking into Chase Bank or buying something from Samsung or flying on Southwest. You're trusting that the promise that the marketing gave you to get you to that brand is going to be carried forth by the customer service staff. And that's something we don't think about a whole lot, that there's a promise that's made to every customer. And it's customer service that has to, you know, whatever you've been promised, they have to make it happen. So I think that's really, really important. Uh, your mouthpiece for your brand is the care team, right? Yeah, and that's why it's so important to have that bottom line with marketing and PR because if you don't know what marketing's doing, then you can't properly answer a customer's questions or complaints that they, they come about. And so really just being openly communicative with your customer care team. Um, I think some marketing uh, departments just don't think that a company needs customer care so they don't need to fill you in, but really they do. I mean, it more, we love as much information as possible because we're going to field any and any type of question that comes our way. I mean, we'll answer ads about Santa Claus and the Galaxy 3 and SB and, you know, why people didn't like it. And so knowledge is power for your agents. Knowledge is absolutely power. And it, it's almost like a meme. Uh, when I get my Google alerts, uh, there's a quote from my book about silos. Silos, old men the team. I mean, we already talked about the very departments that they touch, but where do you find the right people for your customer service? So I'll start. <laughs> I actually just, um, just finished recruiting for a retail specialist for my team, and we had 200 applicants who all believed that they were the right fit in this role. So when we finally whittled down the candidates to, for me to interview, one of my very first questions is to tell me what you think about this team. And you would be surprised how many people had not done any research on either my Twitter, the team's Twitter handle. <laughs> so, you know, at Samsung Global, we get a ton of just very technical questions, troubleshooting questions. Um, but we get a lot of marketing and PR questions as well. So when we're writing that job description for our social media specialists, they have to, you know, be a superstar at marketing. <laughs> You know, while uh, your customer care team should sit under service and operations, um, you shouldn't necessarily just pull from the call center. You're really looking for that special someone who can be the superstar for the brand and talk to the consumer, as well as help them out. Right well. A very small part of this slide is in the lower right hand corner, right? Yep. Can they move from being an employee to acting like a business owner? And I keep bringing you back to because the stake that the company has in that voice on the care team goes both ways. So um, Google Plus, you know, since we're a tech company, it's very tech focused. Um, you know, so a lot of them are developers, um, more technically savvy uh, customers. So you really have to have that social media specialist who is able to, you know, talk to that customer and have a direct connection to developer relations um, or anybody who is asking, hey, I want to develop my app on your phone, can I get a free sample? Or I want to be, I 
And the second most populous occupation for Google Plus is IT professional, and the first one is student. And it skews highly paid. And worldwide, more than the US. So, yes, yes, we all agree. Yeah, and I mean, we have, we have a definition for, for each of our channels. So Twitter is really um, our like, kind of consumer education channel where we push all of our support content. Hey, you've got this awesome Galaxy S3. This is how you set up your email. Here's how to ask me. Here's how to do that. So it's, it's, perfect. it's a perfect medium for that. And then Facebook is really all about the community. That's where we have our concierge service. Um, so defining the brand, you know, each channel and how you approach that channel, even on the customer care side, is very, very important. We're doing a lot of groundwork right now to put framework and governance around our social marketing strategy and handling social media. Which platforms would you recommend they go on first? For what kind of brand? Or do you say, go it all out there and try and cover them all? Well, it, so this is where research and listening comes in the so before we opened any of our social channels, we did a 90-day just like intense listening with our agency. And, um, and, and that really educated us on where our customers were talking about us um, and where they were complaining about us. So if you have a huge presence, you know, if people are really talking about you on Twitter, then it makes sense to go on Twitter. But if nobody's talking about you on Twitter, it doesn't make sense, you know, to be on Twitter. Maybe they're talking about you. Um, so really doing your research and listening before you just, you know, open up a bunch of, bunch of channels and then nobody goes there and you don't have any Exactly. And there's nothing really worse important. than a dead account. <laughs> yeah. If you're just abandoning an account somewhere, close it down if you're not going to get any account. It's, it's, more, it's better to be late to the party <laughs> than early and, you know, you're totally feeling. I would say for us, our, our customers are primarily on questions. Questions. Why? But where's our ROI? What are we getting out of this? What is our brand going to get out of you spending money on having people sitting in front of computers talking to people? Is this really bringing in a bottom line? And I'm sure you're all asked this. How do you prove your bottom line? Because sometimes it can be kind of esoteric. Well, I really only started social customer service so I could get paid to be on to be part of customer care, not just having agents, but also having a very robust monitoring analytical system. Um, so for Samsung, I've been at Samsung for three years, and I actually started the social monitoring uh, program for them, and it's done wonders. I mean, we know right away when we're um, product conscious within the first two weeks what the major issues are, and we're able to escalate that to HQ and our needs to have it fixed, either in consideration of our product or in a software update. Um, and it's, it's just a wealth of information. Anything you know that our product managers need for the need and consideration of our products, they come to me and they're like, hey, you know, what are consumers saying about, for example, our setting menu? Um, and immediately in an hour, I can have them on reports um, with real-time feedback from our consumers who are already passionate about our devices um, to them so that they have actual data to actually make that change on our products. So, you know, well, you know, so it's really important to have, you know, that team, but it's also very important to have a robust monitoring tool so you can fix the issues that you're seeing and that your customers are coming to you about. And we recommend too, if you're in that process of looking, it's very different from any other customer care channel, and it really exposes all of the crappy service that we've um, been giving the customers. One customer has a bad experience, they may tell you know, a couple of people, um, but that's it. So there's really no incentive to change. But in social, it's a once to many. So if you're giving people a canned response, if um, you know they if they don't agree with your policy or your warranty policy, you're gonna quickly learn that you can't have um, that scripting um, or anything else. Uh, you can't interact with the customer like you would through a call because it's a public forum. And are just going to see how crappy your service is. So it actually shows you the gaps. Well, that there's a transparency right. in social media, and that's the important thing. You can't hide behind the corporate shields. Yeah. It's totally transparent. And that's how yeah. people get on there. No, it's, it's to humanize a brand. That's why you're there. If, and 
interaction with Southwest on social media. I am a Chase customer, a happy Chase customer, and I think Samsung makes the absolute best cell phones on the market. You're <laughs> So my question to you first is, what's your reporting setup right now? 